Hi, I'm Marcus Gettner and I would like to tell you something about context-driven testing. Context-driven testing. You can find a website where there are seven principles surrounding the context-driven testing movement are written down. Um, last week there has been the CAST conference of the Association for Software Testing all around the topic of context-driven testing. Well, the website says that there are seven basic principles regarding the context-driven school. All these principles emerged from lessons learned about software testing. Let me read them to you. So the first principle is the value of any practice depends on its context. Second, there are good practices in context, but there are no best practices. Third, people working together are the most important part of any project's context. Fourth, projects unfold over time in ways that are often not predictable. Fifth, the product is a solution. If the problem isn't solved, the product doesn't work. Six, good software testing is a challenging intellectual process. Seven, only through judgment and skill exercised cooperatively throughout the entire project are we able to do the right things at the right times to effectively test our products? Now, what does this say to me? Well, as testers, I think we need to step up. We need to um, make our voices heard. We need to, to show what value we bring to the software development project at hand. <clears throat> as... Kana, Buck, and Petticoat list in Lessons Learned in Software Testing. We are the headlights of the project. We should not give in to, to best practice talk or to, to stuff we know does not add real value to the project or its stakeholders. We should stand up and do the right things in order to, to bring the project forward. Well, you might not know this, you might not immediately know what the best practices are or what the practices are that helps you in your current task, but it is our responsibility to learn from what we apply and to make an educated decision about whether or not something is of value to us, to our stakeholders, or to anyone else. If we don't do that, we are basically setting ourselves up to be well, to be history, maybe in a few years from now. Um, as I recently read on a blog post, I don't remember from whom, I think it was Dark Hoffman or Paul Holland, uh, we've painted ourselves somehow into the corner in the testing business because what we find now is um, software testing being exercised. Well, I, I can't say this gently, exercised really, really bad. And what I see when I get to clients is that, that often companies are so fed up with testers that they don't have anyone who's actually really testing their software. They're applying something they learned in the school or whatever if they have testers. And if they don't, well, I don't know what they do. But what... What we really must achieve is to, to show our stakeholders that we add real value. Now, this might sound, well, easy. <laughs> sure, let's show them how to add value. But it isn't. And um, there are some principles, no, not some principles, there are some things we have to keep in mind in order to do that. So, for example, at times we have to stand up and Community clear, communicate clearly to our stakeholders, to our developers, to our project managers, to our customers. We have to ask for the right things. Don't hide in the corner. While you might find yourself on a, on a project or in company where you does not feel like you're adding real value to anything because no one is listening to you, but still you have to claim what you are doing. You have to f bring the transparency about your progress, about what you are doing and 
maybe eventually pair up with someone with a programmer or with a project manager or maybe your product owner if you apply Scrum, for example. Now, oh, that's it for today. Keep me updated if you find any more things you know how to add real value. Thanks, over and out.